It's another time you're coming to you. This is Voice Church Bluburu, and uh, I am your brother Evans Kocho. Today I want us to share from the book of Matthew, chapter number 27, and verse number 15, going downwards. Let's read as we read together. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, they had gathered together. Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ. For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? I want to repeat that question again. What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ. They all say to him, let him be crucified. Then the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that the, he could not prevail he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, and when he had scored Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Dear friends, I'm glad today the Lord has given us such a wonderful time to share of the Word of God. The Word of God is life. The Bible says that uh, man cannot live by bread alone, but a man can live by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the Lord. And I present to us the bread of life, the Word of God, and I'm glad that you are this time, you have this time to watch with me as we share together the Word of God. I want to talk to us on the subject of redemption, one of the biggest or the capital message in the Bible. Actually, the entire Bible is a story of redemption or it talks about redemption. And this began when our forefathers, or our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned against God and against God's command. And when they sinned against God's command, their act sold the seed of man to this terrible life that uh, so many people live today. That act sold the seed of man to sorrows, to pain, to sinful life, to sickness and to death that was never there. Redemption is all about what Jesus did. Redemption is all about Jesus. It is about what he did, not about what you can do, not about what other people can do, not about what your husband can do. Not about what doctors can do. Not about what your title can do. 
Not about the networks and connections of great people that you have. Not about who you know. It is about Christ. It is about Jesus. So many people have lied to people that redemption is about men. Redemption is beyond a preacher like me. It is only in Jesus Christ. I don't want to make myself deputy God. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. He is the Savior. Redemption is beyond Evans Kocho. Redemption is beyond my church. Redemption is beyond your church. Redemption is beyond your money, beyond your wealth. Redemption is beyond your beauty, woman of God, or my sister. It's beyond your shape, your figure. Redemption is beyond anything about you. It is about Jesus. Redemption is about Jesus. Redemption is priceless. You can't pay for it. You can't. Even when God had to pay for it, when God had to count the cost and pay, he could even pay a million of elephants in the mountains or buffaloes. But it was too deep and too wonderful that God had to pay with his only begotten son. Oh, glory be to Jesus. There had to be a sacrifice for redemption to be initiated. There had to be a sacrifice. And that is why the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 and verse number 16, the common book, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him, learned or not learned, whoever believes in him, living in Karen or in Madari, whoever believes in him, low class or high class, whoever believes in him, white or black, whoever believes in him, American or an African, whoever believes in him, Whoever believes in him, whether you are short or tall, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life that money cannot buy, that beauty cannot buy, that fame cannot buy, that your strength cannot buy. Because the Bible says, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, says the Lord of hosts. And I want to tell you today, redemption is about Jesus, that God loved you so much. It doesn't matter the amount of sin you've committed. It doesn't matter whatever you've done. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the number of years you've been in trouble. The Bible says, For God so loved the world. For God so loved you, my sister. For God so loved you, my brother. It doesn't matter whether you're a drunkard or whether you are a who. It doesn't matter whether you're a drug addict, whether you're a womanizer, whether you are a who, whether you are a prostitute, it doesn't matter. God loved you the way you are. God loved you the way you are. And the way you are, God gave you his son. So that if you believe today, you will be saved. If you believe today, you shall receive abundance of good life. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Today the Lord can touch you. The Lord loves you so much. It doesn't matter whoever loves you or not. Some people are so much concerned about, that, about who loves them. So that, to an extent that they don't think, is God loving me? God loves you. And if God loves you, it doesn't matter who hates you. And it should not even bother you that somebody hates you. It should not bother you that somebody is against you. What you should look is that God loves you. And the moment you understand that he loves you more than you love him, that is the beginning of a change in your life. God loves you. The Bible said that he loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. And the Bible said that when Jesus Christ came, he took all our shame. Our debts were all paid. Our sickness was taken in his body. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were 
healed. The moment Jesus Christ was given those strokes, our sickness was taken in his body. And today, even though you could be sick, there was an account opened in your name, the account of faith. The moment you believe in Jesus Christ, an account of faith was opened in your name. The password is the name of Jesus. The password is believing Jesus. The moment you believe in Jesus, your sickness shall be no more. The moment you believe in Jesus, your shame is taken. The moment you believe in Jesus, your debts are paid. The moment you believe in Jesus, your worries are all taken. You don't need to worry anymore. For the Lord is worrying about you. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the Bible declares, For I know the thoughts I have for you. I have good plans for you. The Lord is thinking about you. It doesn't matter that the loved ones are not thinking about you anymore. During this pandemic, it doesn't matter who is not picking your call anymore. The Lord is thinking about you, my sister. The Lord is thinking about you, my brother. And he has good plans about you to bring you a hope and a future. In as much you don't know what tomorrow holds for you, Thank God you know who is holding tomorrow. And that is the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus. He is able to take all your shame. Our shame was taken. I'm not ashamed anymore. My debts were paid. I don't owe anyone. Glory be to Jesus. Your burdens were taken. He carried all your burdens. The Bible come unto me, all who are heavy laden and are carrying heavy things. And the Lord Jesus promises, I will give you rest. Rest is not in money. Rest is not in beauty. Rest is not in a big title. Rest is not in a big house. Rest is not in a big car. Rest is not in being married by a rich man. Rest is not having a lucrative job. Rest is in the Lord Jesus. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. He took our pain. He took all our nakedness. When he was stripped naked at Calvary, the Lord took all our nakedness, our shame. He carried all that in his body. He carried our sins. The Bible said that we were justified. In fact, the Bible, the book of Isaiah 43 and verse number 25 said that I, even I am, he who blots out your transgression for my own sake and I remember your sins no more. People can remember the things you did 10 years back. People will remind you, government will remind you the things that you did 10 years back when you need unemployment in the government. They will interview and remind you, what did you do such a time in this company? But God shall not remember your sins anymore. It doesn't matter how people perceive you. You know, there was a woman brought to Jesus who was caught red-handed in the act. And they only took the woman, they left the man. You might know the reason why they left the man. But they brought the woman to Jesus. And this is how they accused the woman. They said this one was caught red-handed. And in the law, they misquoted the law. And they said in the law it says, where the woman who is caught doing such a thing shall be stoned to death. The law does not just talk about the woman, but the law talks about whoever. And you know, in such an act that they accuse the woman with, that is one of the things that a woman cannot do alone. It means there was a man that was doing the act on the woman. And the question is, where was the man? Of course, the man was not brought because, number one, the man was a Jew. They would have been ashamed to go and judge one of their own. And number two, they only wanted to use such opportunity to accuse Jesus. And even when she was accused, Jesus asked them a very simple question. Whoever have not committed any sin, be the first person to cast the first stone. I have realized that there are so many people who carry the stone biting their tongues to judge, to call you names, could be the worst, could be the terrible culprits. And these guys were asked, 
whoever have not committed any sin, be the first person to cast the first stone. The Bible says Jesus looking down, men dropped down their stones one by one, including priests, priests that were there. They dropped their stone because each of them, the word guilty was ringing, ringing like an alarm in their hearts. Guilty, 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 guilty. And the Bible says that they all went. When Jesus lifted his eyes up, he was alone with the woman. Of course, the woman knows, knew very well that she was judged. She was facing a death penalty. She was waiting for Jesus to stone her because that was the only man qualified to stone her because Jesus Christ had not sinned. Jesus Christ had not done anything. And you know what Jesus said? Oh, come on. In Jesus Christ, we are justified. Jesus asked the woman, Woman, where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? I know I'm talking to people that have been accused, people that have been judged. The painful part of it is when you are accused by the people that you love most. The painful part of it is when you are betrayed by your friends. The painful part of it is when you go through the ordeals caused by the people that are very close to you. I know you've been accused. Some people have been accused. Men and women have been accused. Some have run out of their marriages because of accusation. Some have been sent out of their marriages because of accusation. Some have been sent out of their jobs because of accusation. Some have been sent out of their churches because of accusation. Some have been sent out of their organizations because of the accusation. Some have been sent out of their families, out of their parents, because of false accusation. And in this scenario, the woman was guilty. Where are your accusers? And he told the master, they are all gone. I remain only with you. It is me and you. Life begins to be good the day you remain alone with Jesus. The day you are with Jesus alone. And Jesus said, woman, I will not judge you because I didn't come to judge, but I came to fulfill the law of God, that is love. Arise. The journey of God begins to go up. Arise from your shame. Arise from your fears. Arise from the judgments and the names that have been tagged on you. Arise from all the shame, the ordeals you've gone through. Arise from the pains and the sorrows you've been going through. Arise, go back, and say no more. That is redemption. Jesus Christ took her place. Of First Peter, chapter number 1 and verse number 18. Knowing that you are not redeemed by, with corruptible things like silver and gold, from your aimless conduct you received by tradition from your fathers, but with precious blood, priceless blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish or without spot. Dear friends, today as I conclude, I want to remind you that the redemption price was too high. Redemption price was too deep. That blood had to be shed. Redemption price was too deep that a sacrifice had to be given. And the sacrifice was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And as Jesus took the price of Barabbas, today he's able to take your place. He's able to take your shame. Is able to take your sorrows. Is able to pay your debts. Is able to do great things. 
is able to heal you from all manner of sickness, is able to restore you back to sound good life, is able to do great things in your life, is able to pick you from the dust where you are and make you sit with the kings. Jesus is able. He was the lamb of a sacrifice. And the Bible says that you are not redeemed by corruptible things. That is why you should not allow silver and gold to take you away from God. Because your life is priceless. No amount of money can buy your life. Don't allow the joy of three or ten minutes to um, I mean, grab away from you, to rip off from you the eternal joy. Don't allow the joy that you can only have for one or two or three years to deny you a chance to go around the throne of grace for a thousand years singing Osana, Osana. Glorified is the Lamb of the Lord. Don't allow yourself the pleasures of this life to deny you that joy. The Lord Jesus was given for your redemption. And Jesus can redeem you today. He paid the price. You can accept him today and be redeemed, be brought back be salvaged, be saved, be delivered, be made available again, be made worthful again. Be, you can get your value in the Lord Jesus. When you look at Jesus Christ, you see your value. You look at Jesus Christ, some people can misuse diminish you, reduce you. They can lower you to a price of a loaf of bread. They can lower you to a price of 100 shillings or 500 shillings. They can lower you to a price of chapati and dengu. They can lower you to a price of Coca-Cola and Fanta. They can lower you to a price of one lunch or one coffee in the evening. But your price is priceless. Your value is priceless. The Lord paid not with money, but with his life. The Lord paid with his blood. He paid the price. The blood that was precious, that saved us from corruptible things, from the conduct that we got from our forefathers, that killed some of us, that were leading us to destruction and to death, from the conduct of drunkenness, from the conduct of uselessness, from the conduct of stupidity, from the conduct of curses, and that seed of curse from the conduct of our forefathers of traditions and cultures that take us back and not to God, from the conduct that would deny you the joy that you need to have in this life before we meet Jesus Christ, from the conduct of so many other things that have taken people away, from the conduct of so many other things people do, that takes Jesus Christ back to the cross. Jesus Christ saved us, redeemed us from such conduct. He redeemed us from sicknesses. He redeemed us from the life of sinfulness. He redeemed us from every curse, from every bondage. Jesus paid the price all. That is why the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, that I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for the gospel is power. The gospel of Christ is power unto redemption, power unto salvation, power unto healing, 
power unto restoration. Power unto your salvation. The gospel is power. It is only in the gospel that you receive your salvation. Redemption. We were redeemed by a price. Redemption price was paid in full. You don't owe anyone anything. What remains is to activate the password. The password is to believe. Believe Jesus Christ. Redemption was paid in full. It's a finished work. And today the same question that Pontius Pilate asked. What do we do with Jesus who is called Christ? The same question you need to ask today. What do you do with Jesus who is called Christ? You can reject him. You can receive him. You can accept him. What do you do with Jesus who is the Christ? You can accept him as your Lord and Savior in your life. You can accept him as your personal Savior. You can accept him as your healer. You can accept him. What do we do with Jesus? And that's a question the young girls today can ask, young, boy, young men can ask. Men and women alike can ask, rich and the poor can ask. Whatever situation you are, you can ask. What do you need to do with Jesus? The Bible said that today, if you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. And keep Jesus Christ away from you. I now want to conclude by saying, the big question that Pontius Pilate asked, what do we do with this Jesus who is called Christ? That the same question that comes to us today, what are you going to do with Christ Jesus? Who is called Christ? Are you going to reject him? Are you going to receive him and love him, accept his love? Are you going to allow him to control your life? Are you going to allow him to guide you? Are you going to allow him to take your shame, take your sorrows, take your sickness, take your sins away? Are you going to allow him to offload your burdens? And dear friends, today, as I pray with you, believe God that God is going to change your life. Your life will never be the same again. Your price was paid. It was paid in full. You don't owe anyone. You just need to accept, believe, and accept Jesus. And the moment you believe in his finished work, that is all. God bless you as we pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for my sister and my brother that was listening to me today. And I pray that God, this second time that we are saying about the message of redemption, that your word shall come forth strong and powerfully again and touch lives, redeem souls, redeem lives, men and women alike. Restore them back to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak their healing and declare and declare healing and restoration and redemption over their lives. May your name be glorified even as they accept you today, as you convict the hearts of men and women to accept you today as the Lord and as the Savior. And I be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and believe. The Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters, and we are available to reach you out. You can check the numbers on the screen. Uh, reach us out and let's pray together with you. We believe that you can be better than the person you are today through the Lord Jesus Christ. You can also decide to partner with us as we preach the gospel. And there's a number on your screen written partner with us. You can do that. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.